Okay, so I'm going to start with the um, onions, braising for braising the meat, and I've already put um, flour and spice, salt and pepper onto the meat, so that um, it can make a nice gravy. Just get that going a little bit more. And I'm going to add some mixed herbs as well. Just mix it over. I'm going to put curry powder. So we're making a lamb stew, which once it's made can sit in the hot box overnight so that it can actually cook really slowly. Because the slower it cooks, the more tender it is and the more nutrition stays in the food. I like just queen. I don't like mixing with teaspoons. No, so. it's a good one. I like that. And as we go, I think what I'll do is um, just say some things about the hot box. Obviously, the whole reason why I was inspired to um, to make them and start producing them and selling them and encouraging people to get into them is because of uh, our rising electricity prices and um, also just to sort of have a bit more of a consciousness around the energy we use and where it comes from and how we can actually conserve energy by using alternative methods. Um, so now the hot box is actually a very old um, concept um, as far as I know dates back to the war days when People were not allowed to use lights and things because of air raids. And they used to wrap up their food in what they called a straw, straw barrel box. So now the more modern version is made out of fabric and we use um, a recycled petroleum product which is the beads, polystyrene beads. Some people don't like that, um, but it's very light. It's also very washable, so it's durable. Mm. You just have to make sure that your dogs don't show up for the hot box so <laughs> that it lands out all over the place. Right, so this will take a few minutes to braise. I'm just going to put the lid on a bit so that it can cook a bit more. And then I'll just explain to you what I've... Uh, let's put that. What else are we going to put in now? When, once it's braised, I'm going to add um, carrots and potato to it and add water and it'll go into the hot box. Mm -hmm. um, what I did after this one last night is uh, put it into the hot box and I left it overnight until this morning, which is supposedly 10 a.m., mm -hmm. um, which means it's kind of been in here 12 hours. Does that make it 12 hours? No? 10 through to 10. Six, yeah, 12 hours. And you can see now, well, I can feel, I suppose you can't really see the heat, but it is still warm. And you can see nice and tender and soft there. The potatoes are completely breaking up. That's just from leaving it overnight in the hot box. So you can actually do this in the morning and leave it all day. And then you'll have a meal at the end of the day. So you don't have to come home and cook. So or, how long do you cook it for before you put it into the Well, that's what we're going to see. Yeah. 10. So that was five minutes ago. Mm -hmm. So we've got okay. five minutes of braising so long. Um, usually the, this process, I think, takes about 20 to 25 mm -hmm. minutes okay. until we get it up to boiling point. Mm -hmm. You'll see okay. it will become boiling before I put it into the hot So pot. the key is to get it to boiling point, in other words. The key is to get it to the highest heat temperature mm -hmm. that you can without burning it, obviously, mm -hmm. before we actually put it into the okay. pot. And then, as you can feel, I mean, it's, it could probably do, seeing that this has been in here for 12 hours now, mm -hmm. this could probably do with being reheated a little mm -hmm. bit before mm -hmm. you, you serve, yeah. but it wouldn't need a lot. Yeah, and it's cooked. And later on, you can taste it again. Right. like to do is I'm making a whole meal mm -hmm. and because I think it's quite a 
um, an average dish that most people cook as an everyday food is to make pot of rice. Okay. Um, pot of rice is incredibly easy to do in the hot box because it doesn't actually require um, as long as cooking time as we're doing with protein, which needs more, more heat to break down. So um, we just bring the boiled water up to boil with the rice in it. So I'm adding rice to this now and a little bit of salt for taste. And we'll get it right up to boil and then I'm going to put it into a hot box. And perhaps by the time we finish, we'll actually see it starting to fluff. Um, most times, depending on what rice you're cooking, this I'm doing white basmati rice. Mm -hmm. This takes a very short time, whereas a brown rice being harder with more uh, of the, the husk on it mm -hmm. will take a bit longer. So, that we've got to go. Carrots and then the potatoes. I'm going to add my spring water rather than tap water from the soil. About two to three cups of water is good so that the potatoes are actually almost submerged. And then I'm going to let this just get the heat up again because the water's cooled it down. And then that's basically ready to go into the hot box. So we have spent, I think, a little over 10 minutes. Yeah. Maybe another three, four minutes. So 15 minutes yeah. it's taken to get it to the point where it's boiling. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to put it inside this hot box here. And what I like to do is I create the hole for the pot and I take a dishcloth. That just uh, helps the inside of the, the hot box to stay clean mm -hmm. in case it gets spills. Sometimes somebody bumps it or whatever, so that just prolongs the life of the hot box a little bit. The, the outers are washable, but um, obviously if you don't want to do that, then you don't have to do it. <laughs> Dad, so you just close the blinds? Thank you. Yeah. Because there's a lot okay, of contrast. So that's okay, is it really too much? Okay. Uh -huh. So, um, the question to me is how often have I used the hot box? Um, and, uh, I, I mean, it really depends on, on kind of routine and, and what people do in their lives. I find that. It helps me immensely because for me to come home at the end of the day when I've been out working, um, I'm a single mother, so um, the end of the day is an exhaustion point for me and I really don't feel like having to get into a whole cooking thing. So either in the evenings, late in the evening, I put something together. Um, as you can see, it's taken about 15 minutes to actually get a stew together to boiling point before putting it in the box. That's not a lot um, apart from pre preparing your vegetables mm -hmm. and things which need to be cut up and diced. Um, so you can put it in in the evening before you go mm. to bed. Mm. And in the morning it's actually ready, but obviously if it's not a meal for the morning, mm -hmm. it can stay in the hot box until the end of the day, which is great. Um, so it can be used every day. I think generally it gets used a lot more in winter than it does in summer. But um, I suggest that people also use it in, in summer as a cooler box because it doubles up being the same principle, it's yeah, an in yeah. incubator, mm -hmm. so um, it'll keep things cold as well as hot. Okay. Um, I'm busy designing handles to fit on here, which, which means that you can carry it. Mm -hmm. So if you go out to a picnic, you can actually take it in your car in the back seat or in the boot. Yeah. It's safe, the handles will close it, and you can put a salad inside it. Mm -hmm. Or um, for, for, for someone, uh, I know what I do sometimes, I leave the hot box in my boot and I'll put cool drinks or ice water or something mm -hmm. like that when it's mm -hmm. really hot. Yeah. And the other thing is when I go grocery shopping, I um, might buy milk and butter. And if I'm not coming home straight away, I put the milk and butter mm -hmm. inside here and it stays cold. There's no melting. Mm -hmm. no? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's a nice useful tip. I've also heard that mothers 
new mothers with babies use it uh, to keep the bottles warm at mm. night. They don't have to get up and go and warm the bottle before feeding mm. the baby. It's already in here. They just reach mm. for it and mm. in the bottle. Um, along with the hot box comes this little booklet, which tells you the whole history of, of uh, hot boxes, where mm -hmm. it began, which I spoke a little bit about earlier. Let's hold it up again. Okay. Um, it tells you how to use it, the basic principles of how to use it, um, that it's an insulator, that uh, you need to get your heat up in your food on the stove before putting it into the hot box, mm -hmm. and then in the hot box the heat keeps the food cooking, um, getting a much more nutritious meal, saving electricity and saving time, which is, which is great for most households. Um, time to complete each meal really depends on what you're cooking. Some things cook much faster, mm -hmm. protein cooks longer, so there are variations. There are recipes in, in the second part of the book, um, which I like to uh, kind of add and change sometimes depending on, on what people suggest on the blog spot. Uh, so there's a rice recipe, there's a French onion soup recipe, butternut soup, there's an old-fashioned bean soup, Irish stew with lamb, oxtail stew, which is a nice South African mm -hmm. recipe, most people like, and there's uh, beef stroganoff. Okay? Um, you are encouraged on the blog spot, which is on the back here, that's http uh, hotboxseats.blogspot.com, is to share your recipes, put your, the recipes that uh, people sort of enjoy using themselves and spread them around, let people share them. Okay. So that's uh, are, are people sharing their recipes? Um, you know, I, don't, I haven't actually checked lately. I haven't checked directly lately, but what I find is when people meet me, they tell me, oh, they do this and they do that, and then send me the recipe. So I've got a collection of recipes which will go into here. Some more recipes. All right, this is going full steam ahead, so I'm going to turn it off. And let's just check what time that was. So that was 15 minutes. So we're going to put it inside this one now. Just making sure that the hollow is hollowed out and the pot sort of stays stable. It'll sink right into the middle. And put the lid on top. Now of course, one of the reasons why I called it a hot box seat is that you can sit on it. You want to take a seat. <laughs> so keep your back warm in winter. Yeah, so <laughs> it's not necessarily meant when the pot is inside, mm -hmm. but um, it can be put in your lounge. If you look behind you there, there's a, there's a couple um, just for samples. You can, you can choose something of a different color that suits your home decoration and then put it in your lounge as an extra place to sit. I mean, if you want to watch TV sitting on it, or if a kid wants to put it into their bedroom, um, it's, it's, it's just one of those comfy, casual kind of things that doesn't have to be hidden in a cupboard because you're not using it, mm -hmm. which is what people always complain about with a hot box. As soon as you say hot box, they are, no, 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 they don't want, they don't want something lying around, you know? So I've tried to design it so that it um, has, another function. It's not just one, one 